He's also got a best-selling book, um, as well as online courses, and he's selling in over 175 countries. So I'm sure many of you can um, empathize with that um, incredible impact that he's having around the world. So Robert teaches the Fire Up presentation model to companies around the world, and these are an incredible list of companies that he's impacted. Cisco, Microsoft, AT&T, and more. And before we jump in, I wanted to share with you a little story that Robert shared with me yesterday at the party that we had over at Meistersell. He said, a Udemy student of his reached out and said, hey, I'd love to connect you with a Norwegian institute. They're doing some research on therapies for Parkinson's disease. Would you be willing to talk with them? And so Robert connected with this institute. They said, we really need someone with vocal coach training to come and help us develop these therapies. Could we actually invite you, fly you out to Bergen, Norway, and have you do some work with us? And so I understand that Robert, in a couple of weeks, is flying out to Bergen, Norway, as a result of this Udemy student that he connected with to help develop therapies for Parkinson's disease. Pretty amazing, especially if you just ex uh, attended Axel's session on passion and purpose. OK, so this morning, we're going to have some fun. Robert is going to show us how to warm up our voices for amplification. We're going to make sure we're not boring in our online courses. He's going to show us how to have more presence in our presentations and build a lesson plan for success in your on-camera presentations. So enough of me. Let's welcome Robert to the stage. Thank you. Coming um, to my presentation. Um, this is an absolutely amazing situation that's going on here um, this weekend. I want it. the first, the second clap I want to give is to you, Demi, for sure, because it's. It's incredible the amount of talent that they brought in for the weekend, and these are the best online course producers in the world. And um, I, I feel humbled and honored to be able to speak to you guys a little bit about what I do. So can we just like give Udemy a big hand? Because this is super cool. This is really cool. They've done a great job, for sure. Um, so um, I got a call, they asked me to if I'd be willing to do this, I said yes, and this is sort of what I felt like. <laughs> um, so what I want to talk about today is, uh, just a real quick show of hands. How many of you have made course content before? Um, I guess maybe all of us, most of us. Okay, fantastic. And have you ever had that moment when you're, when you're, you're, you're on camera, you're looking at the camera, and and you're, you're, there's literally two voices that come into play. There's the voice of you teaching the lesson to the camera, and then there's this odd voice that starts, it's sort of quiet, it comes out from about five o'clock high, and it starts coming, it gets a little bit louder, a little bit louder the further you go, and it says, this is starting to suck. This is starting to suck. <laughs> have you guys ever, anybody, am I the only one that's ever felt that way? How many people have ever felt, felt that like you're on camera, you're going to do this, and this voice comes in and says, this is starting to suck? <laughs> okay, I thought so. That's why I thought this might be a really good presentation for you guys. So what I want to do today is I'm going to show you a methodology that, that is sort of a hybrid of what I do at Fire Up Training um, in the corporate world and sort of what I've been doing with the online courses that I've been um, you know, producing um, through the years. And what it is, it's, it's a... It's a methodology that will help you to eliminate, to eliminate that pain. This, this pain, sort of fear, and the things that happen when, you, when you're on camera and you hear that voice that says, this is starting to suck. Let's, let's talk about a way that we can make a plan for an online lesson, which isn't really a lesson. It's really, if you do it right, it should be a presentation. It is a presentation, really, isn't it? So I'm going to share with you a presentation methodology for this. So it no longer can suck. You can cut down on your jump, jump cuts, and you can get done with your lessons, you know, recording your production much better, and the whole experience would be more fun. Quickly, a little bit about myself. Um, I am an online course producer. I had courses before Udemy was a company, but then when I jumped on Udemy, it was a big hit and everything was quite nice. Currently, I've got uh, uh, four solo um, uh, courses of my own, and I'm beginning to do some uh, collaborations with other voice coaches in other countries where they're teaching my method in their language. So if you have questions later on a little bit about how we're doing that, how we're getting some globalization um, going with your courses through the collaboration tool in Udemy, I'd be happy to talk to you about that. Um, Fire Up Training is a company that um, does presentation skills methodology uh, for Cisco and, and Microsoft, and I've 
been able to work with those guys for a while. And I'm the founder of the Vocalist Studio, which is a, a, a school for singers. And when I say singers, believe it or not, sometimes people say, well, what does that mean? No, I mean, fa la la, pick up a mic and sing a song. Okay, so I'm a voice coach, I've been doing that for a long time. Wrote a, big, wrote a book, did courses and all that sort of stuff. In the course of being a voice coach, I've learned how to present. Just, you know, how to, how to I've gotten decent at it at least. And, you know, how to talk, talk to the camera. There's a YouTube channel and, and all kinds of camera work that's been done. So that's a little bit about myself. Now, um, let's talk about being a great presenter on camera. So do you guys want to be a great presenter? Do you want to be an outstanding presenter? And I'm literally asking you a question. And, and I think it starts a little bit with teamwork. I don't want to only just data dump with you guys, but I want some interaction because this is going to be a workshop. We're going to pull out the handouts and I'm going to ask you guys to actually build something with me in the course of this hour. So on the count of three, on the count of three, one, two, three, on the count of three, um, just, just as passionate as you can, Say, yes, I want to be an outstanding presenter. Can you do that? Can you work with me on that? I know it's a little embarrassing, but let's get past it. Ready? One, two, three. I want to be an outstanding presenter. Okay. <laughs> Not good enough. One more time. One more time. You saw that coming. One, two, three. I want to be an outstanding presenter. Great. Let's get out of our comfort zone, okay? First thing we need to do to get out of our comfort zone is we need to just work on the self-talk, okay? So I'm going to continue with this game a little bit. We'll have some fun. Here are some good ideas. And let's see, how about, uh, how about I learned a method for lesson planning? On the count of three, on the count of three, loud and obnoxious. One, two, three. I learned a lesson for lesson planning. It's great. Good. What else? How about, um, I'm ready to go right now. <laughs> ready? One, two, three. I'm ready to go right now. Okay. One more. One more. I really like this third one. This is my favorite. I think it's super powerful for you guys. I am a professional online producer. This is what I do. Even if you never made a course yet before, and it's still sort of a dream, and you're here to learn how, or you've only made one, or you've made several and you want to get more sales, or what have you, or you've made many and it still terrifies you. Let's change that. This is what I do. When, I walk, when I'm in Seattle and I walk to the studio, and I know I have to go to work to make an online course. And by the way, somebody earlier this weekend mentioned, made a comment, it was in the opening ceremony, that producing online courses is a lonely affair. It is. And I just thought, wow, that is so true. It is lonely. It's really lonely. And one way that I get past that and keep driving forward, and I want to share this with you, is I literally tell myself, um, what do I tell myself? There it is. It's up there. I am a professional online producer. This is what I do. This is what I do. It's like, it's like Phil and these guys, these, these pros back here. He's like, I'm an online producer, this is what I do, the self-talk. It's important. So I want you guys to share this one with, with me. I think it's the most important, okay? When you leave Berlin, I want you feeling confident with your head high that you have what it takes to knock it out of the park. On the count of three, on the count of three, I'm a professional online producer, this is what I do. This, okay, ready? One, two, three. I'm an online producer. This is what I do. Right. Good. To win the game of lesson presentations, you must change the rules. And when I described for you this idea about the, the suck factor, okay, that's sort of the standard modus operandi. It is for all of us to some extent. All right? So today we're going to talk about changing the rules with this methodology. And change the rules you need to win and you must won. So we're kind of getting into the details here. You must create compelling stories. You must be a storyteller. All right? Create compelling stories. Feel like an online course producer. Repeat that to yourself. Start 
with the final outcome in mind. And this is sort of key to the methodology we're going to talk about, and it's coming in the next slide or two. You can't take your student to the lesson and meet their needs and wants and solve their problems if you don't first understand what the predetermined outcome is going to be, okay? And a lot of times when we're sort of rambling and mumbling on and we're beginning to say, man, this sucks. I'm going to have to do this eight more times. When that happens, it's because you haven't materialized in your head exactly where this is going. What's, what's the, 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 the predetermined outcome? So I want you guys today, it's a big part of the, 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 the presentation and the lesson today as my students, is I want you to be thinking a bit about what the predetermined outcome is. What's the point? Why are you doing this lesson? Which is going to be a presentation, okay? And we're going to make up fire up lesson plan. So we're going to get straight to it. You guys have handouts. If handouts, this is the part of the story where you pull out your handouts and you have pens. Because what we're going to do is we're going to actually work, we're going to create a lesson plan, all right? A presentation model for a real lesson, okay? It's not going to be imaginative stuff. Um, it's going to be real, okay? Good, everybody got to work out, hand out? Okay, good. The first thing that I want you to do right at the top is I want you to choose a real lesson, not a fake one, a real lesson that you're currently working on that isn't done yet for whatever reason, one that you know you have to go back and do when you leave Berlin, Okay, or maybe maybe for someone like Phil and these guys out here that have done done this a lot, maybe it's that one most important lesson. They're all important, but maybe it's that one lesson you really want to drive it home and hit a home run in your course. I just want to make sure that we're using our time to actually work on something you can use when we're done. Okay, got that down? Everybody, write that down. The lesson. Okay, something real that we can work with today. All right, I'm going to start about talking about the predetermined outcome. All right, so the outcome checklist. So to find out the predetermined outcome, we're going to deliver what the student's wants and needs are. We're going to define the action that the student must take, and we must move the student closer to a problem. Maybe this seems a bit obvious, but if you're not thinking about it and you're not internalizing it, you're not writing it down 10 minutes before you wire up on the lab and turn on the cameras, you're going to miss it, and you're going to start rambling, and you're going to get sock factor. So, the second thing I want you guys to do is I want you to write down the outcome you want for your students in this individual special lesson. Just write it down. What is the predetermined outcome? What's the point of the next three to 20 minutes in your lesson? We're beginning that process of mapping your lesson. A little bit of Quality time up front saves you a lot of headache and frustration down the road. Thomas, Thomas, yep. Thomas what's the predetermined outcome for, your, for this particular lesson? This lesson? And loud so everybody can hear if you wouldn't mind. So for this lesson, the students will understand a brief overview of the session view in Ableton Live, which is a piece of software, okay. so they can create their own beats and start making their own song after this lesson. Okay, great. Did you guys hear that? He's uh, doing Ableton Live software. Yeah, I know he does the electronic music. It's pretty cool. A little couple more. Up front, sir, your name is? Pablo. Pablo. Yes. What's the predetermined outcome for this lesson you have to knock out of the park? OK, this one seems kind of you know, logical. It's for the trailer lesson, you know, the free lesson you put up there for the course. OK, the promo. Cool, so OK. So the outcome I want is that they purchase the course. <laughs> Okay. For that, I wanted to feel empowered and to want much more. Okay, that's cool. Did you guys hear that? He wants them to feel empowered and want more. So it's sort of, sort of focusing around the CTA, it seems. It's sort of, yeah, it's great. It's great. Okay, so now we have our lesson and we have our predetermined outcome, sort of the, the higher level. We're going to do outcomes again, but we're going to go a little bit more granular in a second here. So I'm going to now present to you guys the the fire of the fire up methodology. This is what we work with, with Cisco, Microsoft, and these guys. And it's typically to salespeople and executives. But this works, I noticed this works for, for, uh, for online course productions as well. Number one, F stands for focus your students. Okay, we're gonna talk about how to get your focus. Two stands for inform the students of the outcome. That's what we just talked about. And three is remind them of their pain 
and pleasure. Now, human behavior, it's well-researched. That Human behavior, decisions are made and people take action based fundamentally on two things. The opportunity to, to avoid pain or the opportunity to gain pleasure. Okay? Sort of a broad term. But if you can hit those points, if you can speak to the student's opportunity to avoid pain or to gain pleasure, then you're going to get their attention. You're going to continue to actually add to their focus. And your lesson is going to be a lot more to the point and more effective. And you're going to feel more confident and you're not going to ramble and suck factor will go away. All right? So um, next, educate and entertain. All right, so you might want to just write down capital F, I, R, E, and we're going to fire. Now we're going to go through the details of this. F, F your students, focus your students. In the first 30 to 60 seconds, roughly, make a plan, have something ready to go that will get your students focus, that will bring them in and pull them in. Now, I... Tried to do that a little bit today with my, with my choking duck picture. And it's, it's one kind of focus technique that we'll talk about. It's humor. Try to, try to get you guys to laugh a little bit. Some did. Others thought it was sort of stupid. But even if you thought it was stupid, I still got your focus. Which was the point. I cared less if you laughed or not. What I really cared is if you looked up, saw the shaking duck thing. Thought, oh, okay, this, this presentation is about ready to start. So it's a technique. It's not only Dex, you can do, that, do this while on camera, okay? So in the first 30 to 60 seconds, roughly, in your presentation, have an idea on, on getting your students focused, draw them in, all right? And here's how we can do it. Next, there we go, humor. Now humor is ex exceedingly, it's, it's a powerful thing and humor, is a great way to draw in your students if you have a moment for it. And humor is also a fantastic way to build a personal connection with your students. Another thing that we need to do, especially those of us that are doing when we do talking head stuff. So, for example, as a voice coach, this is actually a real story. There was a time I was in Seattle, I'm in downtown Seattle, I'm looking at the camera and I'm doing my thing. It's not sucking, by the way. It's actually going well. And all of a sudden, I'm on 2nd Avenue, and I hear sirens coming down the road. You know, we got microphones going, and sirens are coming down the road. And I'm thinking to myself, I got two options right now. And it's going well. I'm thinking, I can just stop and just sort of ham and haw and fuss about it and start over again. Or I could sort of maybe play with it. Because I knew that I could always just do a B-roll and edit out if it wasn't cool. But what I chose to do was I sort of looked at the camera and I said, oh, wait a minute, guys. Hang on, guys. Hang on. You hear that? Yeah, there's a lot of talent in Seattle today. Hang on. And I kind of step back and I let the siren go by and then continued and winked at the camera and continued. But that's an example, I don't know if that's like super funny or not, but it is an example of how, how an unforeseen moment while you're giving your presentation, if you have situational awareness, can be turned into a really unique opportunity that could be funny or at least create a personal connection with your students. I mean, I, they really like that, they like that. And then you get, you get emails from your students and they're like, wow, it's you know, it really sort of cool the way you didn't stop and you kind of let the siren go by and you know, we kind of learned a little bit about your studio and what it's like behind the scenes a little bit and that sort of thing. Okay. Next, ask questions. Ask questions. This would be an example of asking a question. Again, as a voice coach, but this applies to anything you guys were doing. Asking a question. Ready, action. Have you ever been singing and you're trying to go for that high note. And right when you get, for men, when you get somewhere around E or E flat, or for women, if you get around B or B flat, you notice everything's going great. But some, something about E flat and B flat, your voice starts choking, and you start constricting and getting vocal problems. 
That ever happened to you? Of course, I know it happens to them, right? I'm sort of a leading question. And I know that on the other side of the camera, they're going, yeah, that does happen to me. Okay, great. You ever notice that when you're singing that high note and, and in the lyrics, you have to pronunciate the vowel sound of E, U, and er? You ever notice that A, A, and O are easy vowel colors to sing, but every time you come across E, U, and er in your singing, in the lyrics, the voice chokes. This is actually real stuff. This actually happens for singers. This is sort of stuff we talk about as voice coach. And I know the answer is yes. Okay? But I've drawn them in by asking them questions, by, by asking them sort of these leading questions. And you, you guys know what that is in your discipline. You know, you, okay? So that's an idea. The other thing is tell a story. In the first 30 to 60 seconds, maybe the first minute, you could try telling a story. And what kind of story would you tell? Well, how about, how about a story that has to do with um, hard lessons learned? You know, there was a time once, absolutely true story. Ready? Action. There was a time once I was working on this heavy metal thing with a really super high scream. It was sort of a hard thing to do. I took a break. I went out to lunch. I grabbed a piece of uh, some odd walla juice that had been sitting in ice. Okay, at the bistro, at the, at the coffee shop. And I came back, I took a few drinks of that cold, icy fluid, and I went back to the high, the difficult training program, uh, the song I was working on, and I felt something pop in my voice. I literally felt something go, whoa. Now, fortunately, I healed, and now I'm fine. But 90 days, for 90 days, I could not sing high notes. So let me tell you guys something about this lesson. Is, it's a vocal health lesson. And that is that don't ever, ever drink cold fluids when you're training and when you're singing. That is a major no-no. Now, on to our lesson about vocal health. You see how I did that? Teachers need to teach their students the hard lessons they don't want their students to have to go through. So that's sort of obvious. We've all experienced that. But be aware of it. Situational awareness. It makes for a great way to draw people in and get their focus. And last but definitely not least, probably the best opportunity is a demonstration. To demonstrate. Okay? Number one, when you demonstrate right up front for your students the, the skill that you're going to teach, if you can find a way to do that, you have brought them in, got in their focus, and you have inspired your student as a teacher, and what else? Anybody else? It's sort of obvious. Somebody's going to get it. You brought them in because it's sort of cool to see your teacher do something. You've inspired them. What else? But I think one of the most important things about it is authority. exactly authority. Lead by example. Lead by example. So as a voice coach, I would grab this microphone. I'd sing a big screamy high note, something that's impressive to my students that I can do in my sleep. Or I might sing the first few bars of a journey song or something. Of course, it has to be relevant to the lesson, but does that make sense? Okay. So these things will pull your student in in the first 30 to 60 seconds. They're good ideas. I want to ask you guys to write down techniques that you can use in this imaginary lesson. Actually, did I say that? This real lesson that we're working on. Write down techniques, that you, an idea that you can use to get your students focused in the first 30 to 60 seconds. And do me a favor, if you would, please. Don't just write down humor. Don't do that. Participate. Okay? Don't write, I'm going to demonstrate something. No. What is it in this lesson that you're going to demonstrate? Electronic music guy? No problem. Right? Maybe if you're coding, if it's a software thing, I, this is just an idea. I'm not a coder. I'm not a software guy. So maybe it makes no sense. But perhaps it might be something like, like, all right. Guys, check this out. I'm going to write the code to get a bot to turn a transaction on, on Shopify right now. Watch how I do this. 
And maybe you've got like fast, you, know, you sped up the, the video or whatever, and you're showing them, right boom, done. See how I did that? I'm going to show you guys how to do it right now in this lesson. Those of you that are coders or whatever, maybe that makes sense, maybe it doesn't, I don't know. But you get the point. Show them what you do. Get authority. Lead by example. Inspire with a demonstration. And pull them in for focus. Let's just go around the room. I'm, I'm really interested because it'll help us sort of understand the different kinds of disciplines are in here. And way, way in the back room, um, um, yeah, sure, sure. If you wouldn't mind, just stand up so everybody can hear you. If you wouldn't mind, sorry to put you on the spot, but it'll be fun. What, what is um, your name? What are you teaching? And then what is a cool focus idea that, that you wrote? Well, I'm Paul Veronis, and I teach uh, international relations courses. Uh, our course on the origins of NATO. Um, from what I, it's my first course that I just did recently. But uh, what I can say from my experience as a lecturer in, in person in the university, I always like to use music to calm students down and get them focused and kind of get them at ease and you know music uh, different kind of music will kind of get them uh, get them in the mood know that we're starting the class and that's nice that's a good idea use some media maybe some imagery or some music that's a good idea any other volunteers please yeah um, stand up so we can all hear you so, name I'm course uh, and what's your plan <laughs> One of my courses, the one that I'm uh, playing with for this, I teach LinkedIn lead generation, how to use LinkedIn to generate leads. LinkedIn lead generation, that's cool. LinkedIn marketing. Okay. Uh, and there is one lesson that is probably the longest one, and it's pretty boring, but it's also one of the most important ones. So uh, what I come up with, based on what you said, is I'm going to start the lesson by reading by sharing an email uh, LinkedIn message that a student sent me saying thank you so last week I closed my biggest account $20, wow wow yeah your course uh, is amazing right because at least that way will make the the boring lesson more appealing right and people can say oh I can do that right and your name is Gustavo Gustavo if you guys didn't hear this, so Gustavo, LinkedIn lead generation, he basically said, I would share a testimonial, like sort of a positive testimonial of one of my customers that closed a big deal thanks to my, my program. What kind of tactic is that for getting focus? We just talked about it. Demonstration? It's a demonstration. It's a credibility piece. Fantastic. Another volunteer? Okay. Yeah. Hey, did you guys get that? Database security. We're on the promo. I actually saw the video. It's pretty cool. We're on the promo, and he's acting and pretending to be the three different kinds of characters. I think sort of like bad, like the good, the bad, and the ugly. Like bad cop, good cop. I'm the hacker now. I'm the I'm the business owner now. Yeah, sort of like establishing your authority on that. It's also storytelling too, and it's also um, hitting at pain and pain, pain and pleasure points. How to, the opportunity to avoid the pain that the bad guy in your video is, <laughs> right? Yeah, cool. All right. So, next, inform your student of the outcome, the eye of fire. Inform your student of the outcome. In the first 30 to 60 seconds, we want to inform the student of the outcome. It's not good enough that just we know the outcome, but the student also has to know what the outcome is, right? I mean, after all, we are the teachers, they are the students, okay? It might seem sort of obvious, but if you don't write it down, if you don't have situational awareness, and if you don't mention it, it's not top gun presentation best practice. We want, want to inform them of that, of the outcome. Ready? Action. So therefore, on those closed vowels I was talking about, you will no longer choke in lyrics when singing high notes when you come across the vowel color of E, U, and er. All right, informing them of the outcome. All right. Homework, homework. Write down, not the top, top 40,000 foot outcome that we wrote down before, but what I want you guys to write down is three outcomes that your students are going to gain at the end of your lesson. And what I recommend is that you write it 
like this in past tense. At the end of taking this lesson, you will know how to blank. Or, at the end of taking this lesson, this will not happen to you. Your database will never be hacked by thieves. Write it down. And it's literally script. This would be something you would script. Oh, it might be on a teleprompter, possibly, but you probably don't need that. It's just, you can write it down. Trudging forward, reminding them of their pain. We talked a little bit about it before, right? People are motivated to stay, to continue through your course, to continue through the lesson, to take the quiz, to buy another one of your courses, or anything else in life, really, frankly. Um, by the opportunity to avoid pain or the opportunity to gain pleasure. All right, so on this next slide, we have a couple phrases that you can use, some scripts that you can use in your lesson to help uh, them to take advantage of the opportunity to avoid pain or to bring in pleasure. And the homework is this, two things. Write a script pointing out a skill your students have to know to achieve a pleasurable outcome. Literally write the script. Do it now. <laughs> write the script that would, what you would say on camera, that you could say to help them gain a pleasure, or I like this second one too. Tell the story about how you learned the hard way, an important lesson you want your students to learn without doing it the hard way. That's really powerful. So write a script pointing out your skill to your students that will help them gain pleasure by, you know, something they're gonna gain by paying attention and being a good student in your lesson. And then tell a story on you know, how you learned it the hard way. I would like to hear the hard stories. Those are the ones that are gonna be interesting, if you wouldn't mind sharing. Let's, let's hear some of the hard stories, the things that you did, and it's real. You did this, and it cost you a job, or it cost you, you had to start all over, the card house fell down, whatever, and you wanna make sure your students don't have this problem. We're hitting on the pain point. Yes, ma'am, in the back of the room. Okay, so in my first term of studying for a PhD, I had massive writer's block. Okay. I was, I just couldn't get my first piece of work from my supervisor down on paper. I thought I was going to end up getting checked out of Cambridge, which I worked so hard to get into. And thankfully I had a supervisor who understood, and he gave me a piece of advice that I have never forgotten. And that piece of advice is, don't get it right, get it written. And in this lesson, I'm going to show you how you can get it written by not focusing on getting it right. That sounds great. I, I feel like I want to give her a hand. That's really good. Let's give her a hand. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. That was just fantastic. Yeah, avoiding the pain. And also, it's storytelling too, isn't it? I liked it. I have no idea what you're talking about, but I, but I felt like I definitely wanted to do what you're telling me to do. <laughs> um, anybody else? Anybody else? Let's do another one of these. Tell a hard luck story. How you learned, how you, you screwed up, it was a big mistake. Yeah, stand up nice and loud. But tell a hard luck story. That's what I'm asking you to share. Do you have one? Yeah. So, what do you mean with luck, luck story? Well, hey, I, 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 I hate speaking English, and here's an example of how I got in trouble. I got a speeding ticket because I couldn't say what I needed to say, or something like this. Yeah, actually, uh, the first time I wrote writing, uh, um, I was working there, and a guy arrived, and he asked me, hey, how are you doing? I didn't understand the question. How are you doing? So I said, I don't know. I thought, what are you doing? Okay. So for us Italian, what are you doing? How are you doing? Some 
start to get upset. So he said, I don't know, I'm waiting for you. <laughs> what do you mean? He said, I don't know, what do you mean? <laughs> do it, and then you the same question again. He said, I don't know, I mean, I'm speaking to you. Yeah. And so I started looking at me like uh, she's not very happy. She's the kind of say, and I was supposed to be his colleague, you know? So I said, I don't know, what, what do you mean? How are you? He said, oh, come on, tell me, how are you? You know? So frustration and embarrassment, yeah. Right. Another time in London, I was looking for a Piccadilly Sears. <laughs> and they said, I'm oh, sorry, where is Piccadilly Sears? I don't know what you mean. Piccadilly Sears, because you know, this square with like really, ah, uh, Piccadilly Sears. <laughs> ah, now I know. Yeah, cool. So every time, so it's very hard for the Italians, the pronunciation and everything. So for me, English is pain. So, <laughs> 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 well, thank you. That's great. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, English is pain. <laughs> cool. You guys get the point. Get the idea. Yeah. I mean, these, there's a lot of experience in this room. I mean, that's why we're here. We are experienced people. We're, we're coaches. We're teachers. And so you probably have a lexicon, a library of 20 of these stories. You could write them out. What if, what if you wrote out? Um, you know, learn it the hard way. You wrote out just 10, learn it the hard way lessons in your profession that, you know, on the flight home when you leave Berlin. And you can then resurrect, you can repurpose those in, in your course. When you go back and do your next course, you can work it inside. All of these techniques, by the way, are helping you to build a personal connection with your students, which is another thing that I want you guys to take away from this. All right, so it's not just sort of a screen and a guy I don't really know on, you know, on Udemy. Oh, it's good. But if you can get a personal connection with people, I mean, literally, they kind of know you a little bit on a personal level. Telling stories a little bit about your life just for a moment goes a long way to get loyalty, to get high reviews, to have them buy more courses, and for it to expand into other opportunities, even outside of Udemy. All right. I'm trying to be my student's friend. I want them to not just know my course and my techniques and things I'm, I'm, I'm teaching. I want my students and my singing students to know Rob. I want them to know a little bit about me, personally. And that builds loyalty and other things. Okay? It's cool. So last, we have educate and entertain. Now, since we're sort of short on time, I'm going to sort of blow over the educate piece a little bit. I'll give you the slide. There's our old friend, tell a story. One thing that can help for educating, I'm sure some of you guys do this, those of you that do not, I recommend that you try it in educating. I'm, I'm sort of a list presenter in my lessons. I do a lot of one, make sure that you start Ready, action, one, to do the contract and release onset workflow. You're going to start in the head voice in falsetto mode, open the glottis and, 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 and blow through air. Number two, you're going to close the embouchure but keep the glottis open. Number three, you're then going to leverage the tongue against the back of the, back of the bottom teeth, okay? And you're going to create intrinsic anchoring, get the larynx down. Four, you're going to release that vowel in the head voice, and it won't sound windy and falsetto. It'll be full and belty, and it'll be a belt, okay? You see what I did there? That's a workflow. I'm listing. So that's, that's a great way to educate. A tactic. Um, demonstrate models we talked about at screen captures. Of course, there's a lot of that in quizzes. Entertain. Keep smiling. <laughs> Especially on talk, talking heads. All right? And voice inflection. Visual, auditory, and kinesthetic. What does this mean? This means being able to to, uh, uh, to speak on camera with different levels of dynamics. So visual translates roughly to... I'm excited, it's a little bit loud. I'm, I, I, I'm raising my voice a bit because I want you to give me your attention. That was an example of visual. Auditory is sort of down the middle and kinesthetic is that dramatic pause. You can use. Ready? Action. This online course is going to help you to bridge the passaggio and sing in the head voice like you've never seen before. Guaranteed. If you do the work, if 
you do the work and you practice, you will learn to sing with one connected voice. I guarantee it. See what I did there? I used, I used the visual, sort of loud, kind of went down auditory, and then I used the kinesthetic for a dramatic pause. Kinesthetic sort of means the drama. Okay. And um, humor. Whenever you see it, humor sort of comes in. We mentioned it before. It comes in sort of randomly. The thing about humor is have situational awareness of it. Rem know when it's there. And if something funny happens, if, the, if you're doing... If you're doing a lesson and the, and the cat jumps on your lap in the middle of the, the middle of the lesson, I don't know, maybe kill it, but maybe not. Maybe that's an opportunity to introduce your cat to your audience and make a little bit of a personal connection and then say, get out of here. <laughs> maybe there's a cool little metaphor or a tie-in that you can put in, like, you know, the cat really sneaks up on the mice and da 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 da, just like the hackers are gonna sneak up on you if you don't write this code properly. Be aware of that. It makes your presentation cool, if you can pull it off. And they come random. Cutaways, lower thirds, we're all doing that, that's fine. Okay, and the thing that I like on here, I'm sort of saving the best for last, I really like this. Teach on your feet, not on your butt. I'm a big stickler for that. When you're on your feet, one, it gives you posture. And the posture that it will give you is a certain sense of, you know, confidence and heroism, authority. Somebody over here said authority. Get on your feet when you're teaching. Also, you notice I'm teaching right now. I'm on my feet. What, what, is it, what does it allow me to do? What does being on my feet allow me to do? Anybody, just a couple guesses? Someone? I'm on my feet. I'm not sitting down, so therefore I'm able to do what? Yeah. I'm moving. I'm teaching with my entire body. It's not just I'm staring at the screen. Da, da, da. No, I'm teaching with my entire body. And it's a little bit athletic. Also, when you're on your feet, you can gesticulate. You can, you can teach with your hands better. You can do this and communicate with your hands. Communicating with your hands, gesticulation adds value to the message. Okay, it allows you to communicate better. And it's... It adds to the entertainment factor, okay? Plus, we talked about credibility and we talked about um, a leading by example as well. It's, it, it makes a lot of sense for singing and other professions, but I think it would make sense for anybody, anyone. You don't have to be singing, okay? But to me, and I wanna share this with you, it's really super important as my students. And, and this is what I tell my singing students and my coaches, all right, is, is when you're on your feet, when you're teaching on your feet, then you're telling in a way, in a subliminal way, you might even flat out tell your students to get on their feet, to get on their feet, all right? When you're on your feet, you're ready to go to work. Let's go to work. And I'll, you, there, are, there, are, there are lessons in my course where I look to the camera and I say, look, get on your feet when you practice. Don't sit down because we're working. You're gonna train. This is training, okay? And I'm on my feet, so I expect you to be on your feet too. I'm at full attention on this topic. I'm singularly focused on this topic to give you guys 110%, 110%, and partly because I'm on my feet. So I expect my student to give me 110% back. It's okay to be tough love a little bit, and it's okay to be the big brother. Be the big brother for your students. Don't let them slack. You, don't, you can't see them, but you just make sure. Make that point. And if you're just, if it's something about, it's, it's, it's coding Java or whatever, still, can you get on your feet and get a stand-up desk? You'll have all the posture and the voice and the gesticulation benefits from that. It just has a subliminal message. It, says, it communicates to your student, we're ready to go to work. We're going to get something done here, okay? We're not going to sleep at the wheel. I've got five minutes left. I hope you guys have gotten some value out of this. I want to make sure that I can answer some questions for you. As a voice coach, I can also 
share with you real quickly some quick vocal warm-ups. Okay, I've, I've been learning this weekend that that was a bit interesting for you guys. I'll just tell you this. I do have a course on Udemy called Vocal Warm-Ups. So if you're interested in going into more detail about how to warm up your voice for on camera. Now it's sort of a hybrid, it's sort of for singers and for public speaking, and I make that point, all right? But it's called Vocal Warmups, Robert Lunty Vocal Warmups. So you can go out there and check that out. Um, and if you guys tell me that you came to my thing today, I'll give you the free discount link or whatever if you like, that's fine, okay? But you guys wanna do the vocal warmup thing real quick? Okay, I don't have all, I don't have all of the um, facilities available for me to do that, I do got one of these. I had one of these. Testy check, testy test. Yeah, okay, great. All right, so what I'll do is real quick, next four minutes, you guys want to write this down. And I'm going to teach you with a workflow, with a list, because I'm short on time, okay? And I'm going to, it's going to come at you pretty quick. But this is one of the things that you'll get into more detail in my vocal warm up course, okay? <sighs> Number one, get a keyboard. Get a keyboard. Get a, get a piano keyboard. It doesn't mean you have to be a pianist. I'm not a pianist, I can't play piano but you need to be able to poke a note, okay? Could be even be an app, just get an app or you can poke a note, okay? It's not, not necessary, but it's helpful, all right? Two, what you're gonna do is you're going to buzz on a nasal. Buzz on a nasal, what does that mean? In English, there is a, there is a, there's a set of, a family of consonants called the nasals, okay? And that is mm, mm, and mm, m, n, and ng. These are the three nasals in English. Okay, you guys probably don't know this, but I'll let you know a big secret for singers. If you buzz on a nasal, if I do this, if I do this, that sounds funny, it's vocal, it's vocal lesson stuff, so don't laugh at me, but if you do this, and you buzz on a nasal, buzz, don't hum, don't do this, you want to get this right this time. You got a buzz, don't hum. You're going to make your lips vibrate and your nose tickle, okay? It's like, it's this. Okay, I'm buzzing on a nasal. I'm buzzing on an M. Make sense? Okay, you need a buzz on a nasal. Three, three, you need your lips to tickle or vibrate to make sure that you're doing it properly. Make sense? Three, make sure your lips are tickling or vibrating. That means you're getting the resonant energy behind. Okay, four, four. Two minutes and 30 seconds. You have to thin out the vocal folds, okay? Create compression and uh, remove pharyngeal constriction, which means you're going to whimper like a puppy. You're gonna do this. Don't just do this. Mm, do this. Mm, okay? You're going to cry into the buzzy nasal. Does that sound weird or what? You had no idea today that you were going to come here and, and learn that you could cry into the buzzy nasal. It sounds very abstract, doesn't it? But this is what great singers do to get their voice healthy and great public speaking. Okay? Cry into the buzzy nasal. <laughs> or whimper like a puppy. <laughs> That's doing stuff inside the mechanism that will help your voice be more amplified and more animated. Like you're hearing my voice getting more amplified now. It's partly because I'm doing the buzzy nasal thing, okay, in my course. Last, the last step, and then I'll let you guys go. Um, we're going to do a couple questions, I guess. The last step in the vocal warm-up thing, okay, is keyboard, nasal, buzz on an M, feel the buzziness in your lips, whimper like a puppy, cry into it, and to release that into a vowel. You will release into a vowel. Watch. My program would call this track and release. I'm tracking and releasing. Whimper like a whimper like a puppy, whimper like a puppy. What the buzzy nasal does is it balances vocal fold compression and respiration pressure, and it creates some really very interesting physics I don't have time to get into in the upper vocal tract, and what it does ends up amplifying your voice, okay? And it enables you to sing really great 
and for sure be able to publicly speak or speak on camera without vocal fatigue, without the resonance being dopey and dark in your throat. That's not what we want. But to be lifted in the upper vocal tract, bright and brassy, in the mask, and animated and amplified, which is what we do want. And that adds to the entertainment factor, it adds to the focus, and everything else we talked about in the methodology. Okay, so there's your lesson plan methodology with a little bit of vocal warm-up. Thank you so much for listening to my presentation.